Hey everyone, this is Phil, and in this video we're going to be talking in depth about the Huamang YS3M. So this is Moyu's newest flagship, and we've had it for a while now. We had plenty of time to do solves, streams, long averages, all sorts of stuff. So we're ready to show you guys our opinions and uh, why we think this cube might be good for you. So we were actually waiting to make this video because we were waiting for all versions to be out. Finally, we've collected the last piece of the puzzle. This is the UV coated, or as Moyu wants it, magic clothes version of the YS3M. So now that we have all of them, let's get into their specs. So we have four versions of this cube. Let's go through the similarities first. They're all 55 millimeters. They're all magnetic. You can adjust the elasticity using the Moyu tool. That's been a classic Moyu feature for a very long time. And the tensions are adjustable using the screw on each side, which is also very normal for Moyu cubes. The base form of this cube weighs 76 grams, and you'll see it get heavier and heavier as you add magnets for maglev and the bong core. If you choose to get the maglev version, you're looking at an 80 gram puzzle, which is only four grams heavier than the standard. The ball core version weighs 83 grams, which is not a huge jump in weight, which is really surprising actually. And the UV coated version or the Magic Clothes version is also 83 grams, so the exterior coating does not seem to add any additional weight. Let's zoom into the cubes that we think are going to be most competition viable, which is the ball core version of this puzzle. We have two of them, we have the UV coated version and the standard one. This cube performs exactly as you think a MoYu flagship would perform. Uh, the corner cutting is completely fine. It has no part where it's like really awkward unless you're cutting at a very extreme angle then the puzzle will jam up a little bit. The small cuts are fantastic and the overall maneuverability of the puzzle is very good. The overall feel is kind of tactile. You get this crunchy feel when you're turning multiple layers in succession and uh, overall it's a very tactile puzzle and it reminds you that you're turning kind of a clicky puzzle each time you're moving. So one thing a lot of people comment on is the difference between the cube once it's broken in versus when the cube is first received. So when you first receive this cube, it might feel sandy because it's not very well lubed from the factory. That's completely okay. Once you break it in and add some of your own lube, it actually turns really well and that sandiness completely goes away. I think that happens a lot with Moyu cubes. You just need to give it a little time to break in and then it'll feel like a much better cube. All right, now for all the important questions people ask. You know, we've been collecting them over the past few weeks, so we're going to answer them one by one. We are not going to leave a single question out that we've seen at least. All right, so one important thing people ask is, what the heck is magic clothes? And not grammatically correct, but also grammatically correct at the same time, what is Magic Clothes? So Magic Clothes is a technology where they make the outer surface of the puzzle glossy, similar to GAN's UV coating. In fact, the finish is pretty much the same. It's scratch resistant. It kind of reflects light and it's very shiny and it's great for grip. Do you have any idea what the translation was supposed to be? No. <laughs> like if you read the characters on the text, like it, it just says Magic Clothes. I'm doing that right now. Okay, okay. okay. All right, so I, I found out what Magic Clothes is. The Magic Clothes edition, they call it Mo Yi Sheng Ji Ban. So Mo Yi, like Yi Fu is like clothing and Mo is like magic Mo Shu, right? So it's just like Magic Clothes. But it, it, it feels it feels better in Chinese because like Mo Yi is so like easy to say, it's like very concise. Mm -hmm. When you say like Magic Clothes, it gets a little much. It sounds much better in Chinese than it does in uh, English, yeah. but it, it's their tech, they can name it whatever they want. All right, so now that we know what Magic Clothes is, the next question people ask, which is a very good question is, why is there such a big price difference between the standard version and the Magic Clothes? The standard ball core version, the one without any coating is $25.99 and the UV coating version of that is $36.99. So why is this outside coating so expensive, people ask? I think there are a variety of ways to look at it. One is to compare it to GAN's pricing, which is, $5 for the UV coating and it makes you feel like, okay, the UV coating is valued at $5. There are really two ways you can look at it. You can be like, ew, it's an $11 upgrade, which should only cost $5, right? And the other version is, okay, well now that's $36.99. That's the cheapest UV coated cube you can get on the market. And I honestly think the second one makes more sense because I think that people forget GAN has a ton of inbuilt margin with their cubes. So 
a QVD price at $60 is actually making them a ton of profit. So the $5 difference between a UV coating and the standard matte version is not going to really break the bank for a GAN puzzle because they're making healthy margins on both products at that point. Whereas the $25.99 price point of the Moyu Cube makes it a lot cheaper. And perhaps the tech does actually cost that much money to implement. And because it's Moyu's first run, maybe that's just the cost of creating the cube. So our prices are determined by the manufacturer's wholesale prices to us and that's the only thing that really determines the pricing and the manufacturer wholesale price was higher on this cube so we had to price it at $36.99 but I do think Moyu historically has been very very reasonable with its prices if you think back like the RS3 Super RT2020 great budget cubes Weilong WRM 2021 the light version is in the low 20s their cubes don't get that expensive so I'm willing to give Moyu some credit on this one and just assume that it's their first time and they've priced it in a way to make their business sustainable all right, so which one of these four versions should you get? My recommendation is to always start with the Bong Core. That's the most advanced design with the most features and it gives you the most stability when you turn. The ball core makes a huge difference when you're turning fast. It keeps the cube together. It's not that heavy and overall the performance is pretty great. So now that we're locked in on the ball core version, you have to make a choice between the matte version or the magic clothes version. And it's mostly based on personal preference. If you're not willing to spend $36.99 on something that's slightly nicer, but pretty much the same as the other version, get the matte version. It's simpler, it's cheaper, and if you use it enough, the texture will smooth out and it'll be good to grip anyways. If you think that the UV coating is a deal breaker and you absolutely love it, maybe you come from a GAN cube, then I would go for the UV coating because then you immediately get the nice grip that you can use on Solve One. All right, so the next question is, how does this cube fit into the competitive meta? To answer that, let's give you a rundown of what the meta is. So we got the GAN 12, the GAN 13, the Tornado V3, the RS3 Super Ball Core mostly, the RS3 2020, and then there's might be like an MS3X somewhere in there. We're gonna compare this cube against some of the other cubes that we just listed and talk to you about the differences and the similarities so you can see how they stack up. So first things first, we can compare this Moyu cube with the existing Moyu cubes, namely the RS3M 2020, RS3M Super, and maybe the Weilong WRM 2021. All these cubes are built on the same tech, so nothing is really all that different except the Worm 2021 has adjustable magnets. All of these cubes use the same elasticity adjustment feature. All of them use a screw and some of them have maglev. Compared to the RS3 2020, the YS3M is a little bit smaller at 55 millimeters. It's more compact and you can really feel that when you're holding and turning the cube. Uh, the cube is also not as clacky as the RS3 2020, especially out of the box. And uh, compared to the RS3M Super Ball Core Edition, the YS3M is slightly less blocky. So when you corner cut, you're not feeling the pieces jam up against each other a lot. The RS3 Super seems to demand a little more turning precision when you're turning fast. The YS3M is a little more flexible. And compared to the Weilong WRM 2021, the YS3 is naturally faster and it has a more tactile solving experience compared to the 2021, which is a lot smoother, especially after lube. So as you can see, the YS3 does stand out in the list of Moyu cubes that people currently use. It's not entirely different because it's built by the same factory, but it has enough difference to warrant a try if you're interested in the cube. Next up is the Tornado V3. This is a really common sought after comparison. How does Moyu's flagship stack up against Chi's flagship? So I think this is a very hard comparison because both cubes are very, very good. One example of a person that's used this cube and the Tornado V3 in a very short amount of time together is Max Park. He was originally using the Tornado V3, but for his latest average, he used the YS3M. So people do switch from the Tornado to the YS3M and vice versa. I think the biggest difference is the Tornado V3 feels like there's more empty space. You can really feel the pieces where they're touching and also where they're not touching. The YS3M has a more compact feel where there's very little empty space on the inside. The other big difference is the flex of the cube. The Tornado V3 is naturally a lot more flexible on moderate settings versus the YS3, which is a little bit blockier. It's not as blocky as the Balcor Super, but it's still a relatively blocky cube compared to the Tornado. And last, the Tornado V3 obviously has a ton of adjustment features that the YS3 lacks. So if you're looking for a cube that you can fully adjust then the Tornado V3 might be a better option because you can actually do that. The YS3 lets you control everything except the magnet strength. So if you don't like a moderate to strong magnet setting, you might want to avoid this cube. 
All right, next is a very casual comparison. We're gonna compare it to the MS3X by Dianchang or MS Cube. We think that this cube is in most ways better than the MS3X. The YS3 feels more stable and reliable, and I think in competitive solving that counts for a lot. And I would only get the MS3X if you had some very specific reason to do so. All right, and finally, let's compare these cubes to GAN cubes, which is also another comparison that people think about a lot. GAN cubes, as you know, are some of the most feature-rich cubes on the market. They have not only all the adjustment features, but the GAN 13, for example, has a lot of additional ones like the opposing magnets in the edges. GAN cubes are also very light compared to Mojus cubes. I think Mojus cubes are on the heavier end. And so if you're looking for a light cube, then definitely the choice is pretty obvious. If you're indifferent about the weight, maybe you can think about which features you're going to use and how much you're willing to pay for them. And if you're a fan of simplicity, you might want to go for the YS3M because it's a lot simpler and easier to use. So now that we've done all this comparison, we're gonna help you choose a cube in general. So I think the first thing to do is to choose whether or not you want to fully adjust your cube. If you want to fully adjust your cube, then naturally the YS3M might not be a good fit because you have other options like the Tornado V3 and the GAN cubes and maybe even the Weilong WRM 2021. Those cubes you can adjust a lot more settings on. If you know you like stronger magnets in your cubes, then maybe this is a good choice because then at that point, you're paying for adjustment features that you might not need. Another thing to think about is the size of the cube. If you like a smaller cube, like a 55 millimeter one, then this again is going to be a good choice because it's compact. So I think this cube is really nice for people who like compact, simpler cubes with stronger magnets. I know that sounds kind of specific, but I think that's actually a lot of people. That's what I like. You know, that's why I think I gravitate towards the YS3M so much. I have small hands and I like the magnet strength and I don't really feel like I wanna change anything with the magnets. And of course I might play with the elasticity and tension and whatnot. So this is a cube that's really good for me because I know I'm not paying for something that I don't use. So my overall feeling about this cube is very positive. It's a very simple, no nonsense cube that is reliable to use because it's not ridiculously fast and ridiculously light. I personally like that a lot. When I do longer averages, I can really see the cube giving me stable times. Just to note, the cube can be modded in a variety of ways. We have the RS3 2020 mod where you could put the blue components of the old 2020 model into this cube. And because there's more space in the component, you get a wider variety of compressions that you can use. Alternatively, or in addition, you can be like Steven and you can unmaglev the ball core version, which is what he did and he put his signature on it. He felt the cube was too fast with maglev tech. So he put a spring inside of it. He also has the blue 2020 mod. So he's done both. You can change the hardware. All the hardware is cross compatible. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's I think the extent of the reasonable mods you can do to this puzzle. And of course, modding the cube is not required for you to enjoy the cube. Uh, this cube is completely fine stock. And uh, in fact, our UV coated one is stock and we haven't really done anything to it besides compressing it a little bit and adding some lube. All in all, uh, I think very highly of this puzzle. I'm kind of sad that there are four versions of it, which can lead to choice paralysis for some consumers. We hope that videos like this help. I know a lot of other people and other companies are making videos. So any video about this explaining the differences is really helpful. So I encourage you to learn as much as you can about these puzzles so you can make a good decision. From the competitive aspect, I think this cube fits very well into the meta. I think a lot of people are going to be switching to it. I know Luke Garrett and Patrick Ponce have been getting some good results on this cube and Max Park used this recently as well. So this definitely has a lot of support in the competitive arena as well. At the end of the day, this cube is extremely simple. It's very no nonsense. It's usable out of the box. You can change things if you want and the price is not crazy at all. I think it's very, very fair for what it is. So if you'd like to give it a try, you can check it out on thecubicle.com. We'll have links in the description and I hope you have a good day and hope this video was helpful.